We got a full tank of gas, half a pack of cigarettes, it's dark, and we're wearing sunglasses. Hit it. You want answers. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. Open the pod bay doors, now. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to Cinemates, a podcast where a bunch of mates chat about cinema over some drinks. Today, I'm joined by Georgie. Georgie, thanks for coming on the show. How are you going? Good. Thanks for having me. So exciting. No worries. So a couple episodes back, Georgie did an elevator pitch for Bridgerton. And while I was a bit hesitant at first... Came uh, around. Doing <laughs> the dark side. Sure, came around. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, you would have heard my short review, Loving the Show. I think I was in the first season at the time, but I've since smashed the whole thing. Mm. So today we'll be diving into season two of Bridgerton starring Jonathan Bailey and Simone Ashley. And while we do that, we're drinking something a little different today. We've got Archie Rose vodka mango spritz with lime and chili. So we'll see. Mango we'll and s- lime and chili. I wasn't sure about it. <laughs> we'll, see. we'll see how they go. <laughs> and if you haven't already, make sure you're following Cinemates on your chosen streaming platform and leave a five-star review. Also check out the Cinemaze YouTube channel where I post video essays on film and TV characters. Now getting into it, Georgie, as a keen listener of the podcast, (laughs) you would have known that we do ask our guests a few questions about cinema to see what they like to watch. So we've just got the deep ones now. First question, most memorable movie that you've seen in cinemas? Okay. So this is going to ruin my credibility. (laughs) (laughs) Straight away. Starting strong. Um, But... Okay, I don't like this movie, but it's, it's like my best cinema experience. Okay. So in year, I think it was in year 11. Yep. At school and the whole year and then and mums went to see the new Twilight. The like Breaking Twilight Dawn. Twilight Breaking Dawn part one. <laughs> God. And, yeah. Um, and it was just the most like classic cinema thing where at the end, no one Bella's eyes like open red. Yeah. And it's like a hundred screaming girls. Big, like, big oh cliffhanger. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And all the moms are like, wow. That's so That good. was like the, probably the best like cinema movie. Nice. Yeah. There would have been a lot of hype as well with the a books. A lot of hype. Yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> Next question. Fastest TV show binge. I mean, it was probably Bridget in season two. That was a good, that was a Sunday night. I was up till four and I had work. Up till four. Yeah. Wow. Just blasted through it. Yeah. I, I think I binged it as well. Like since you pitched it, mm. um, smash season one and then. Yeah, you were very quick. Uh, yeah, I was. <laughs> and like, wow. there was like one night where I was out, um, came back home. It was very late in the night. Um, probably still drunk and just watched like four episodes of Bridgerton, like eating Classic. pizza. So good. Oh, what a night. <laughs> Great <laughs> night. Uh, next question. Favorite Australian movie? Bending the rules a bit. It's an Australian director and it was filmed in Australia. Okay. Can that count? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, bit of a loose definition. I just like love this movie. I have to give it a shout out. Moulin Rouge. Oh, nice. Baz Luhrmann. Yeah. The best movie. Just, so good. Have you you've seen it? Yeah. Yeah. Like the, the Roxanne bit. Mm. We like... I'll never forget it. We like paused it halfway through because like our food came. We paused it in the middle of that scene and everyone's like, oh my God, like, just like panicking. Yeah, we <laughs> ran out to get our food. It's like quiet, everyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, so so good. good. Next question. A movie that you think everyone needs to see. Um, This one, I, it's funny, we grew up with this movie a bit and every person that I'd be like, oh, I should watch this. Mm. No one's ever seen it. It's called The Hate You Give. Okay. And, um, I haven't seen it myself. It's very similar to what happened with George Floyd and when all that happened, Apple actually made the movie free to watch for a couple of weeks. Okay. Um, I just Is it a documentary or No. So fiction? They, it came out years before like George Floyd, but yeah. it's just so eerily parallel to what happened um, and it just dives into like all the context and, and it's like it starts off as a bit of like a high school drama sort of thing mm. and then it just yeah and it's just like an amazing I don't know it's just a really good movie I think it heartfelt see. story yeah nice next question favorite streaming service <clears throat> I mean it's gonna be Netflix Drive <laughs> to Survive it gets me through it Frank, yeah. they took Happy Mother away though I won't forgive them oh really didn't they I th- they, they took Happy Mother Friends 
One of them. Probably because I know How I Met Your Father is on, I think, Disney. No, I haven't. (laughs) I don't know if I want to. Um, But, yeah, Netflix is great, especially with Bridgerton. Yeah. TV show that you're watching at the moment? Um, I'm really watching a few. I'm watching Yellowstone. I started listening to the shout out to Lucy Lennon. I started listening. (laughs) For the first time, Yellowstone? Yeah, I'm up to season two. Oh, nice. Um, But I'm juggling it with the staircase. Oh, cool, yeah. So in the last episode, we had a Cinemates elevator pitch from Tom who recommended Honey Boy and I really enjoyed it. It was really good overall. Cinematography was very cool, kind of unique style looking at, you know, the late 90s, early 2000s sort of Hollywood scene. Um, the story of Shia LaBeouf's sort of upbringing as a child actor was actually really interesting and moving. Like you kind of see all the scandals and the publicity around him now, but you don't understand where he came from and his dad like really pressured him as a child actor. Um, so really interesting story. The score is really good. So yeah, definitely one to watch. I think it's on Netflix at the moment. So Tom, thanks for the recommendation. I think you've restored your credibility Check as a pitcher. Uh, but yeah, definitely watch Honey Boy. So for the next Cinemates Elevator Pitch, we've got Josh. So let's hear what he's recommending. Hey Cinemates, friend of the podcast Josh jumping in here to talk to you about one of my favourite shows that I highly recommend, Killing Eve. It's a British spy thriller that follows intelligence investigator Eve Palastri, played by Sandra Oh, as she hunts down one of Europe's deadliest assassins, Villanelle, played by Emmy winner Jodie Comer. These two main characters, accompanied by Phoebe Waller-Bridge's incredible writing, absolutely steal the show and create tension and drama that will enthrall every scene they are in. Jodie Comer is incredible in this career breakout role, playing the emphatic, divulgent and mysterious Villanelle, acting in multiple accents, speaking multiple languages, as well as showcasing her incredible dramatic acting skills. The character of Villanelle is so unique and quite possibly nothing you've ever experienced before on the small screen. The show also has a host of great British supporting actors that really have an influence on the story and action alongside Sandra and Jodie. You will find yourself traumatised by some scenes and sympathetic with these strange and wonderful characters, which makes this show so memorable and definitely worth going back and watching again. This 21st century take on traditional espionage stories is not one to miss and certainly one of the best shows the BBC has produced in the last decade. Let me know what you think. Okay, Killing Eve. Have you seen that, Georgie? No, I haven't. But you've sold it to me. It sounds good. Yeah, it sounds very good. I know he gave it a good rap uh, on a previous episode. So definitely we'll give it a watch and we'll see how it goes. Okay, so getting into Bridgeton, to the listeners out there who haven't seen the show yet or season two for that matter, Georgie, what would you say about the show in one word? Smoldering. Um, okay. Just the vibe between Anthony and Kate, which I think is like the main story in this. Yeah. Um, yeah, that'd be my word. Okay, interesting. My one word is going to be frustrating. Fair. They <laughs> really teased it out this season um, and especially coming fresh into the show, having binged it all. Season one was, they kind of gave it to us, yeah. but, you know, there was a bit of drama unfolding. But this one really had to wait until like the final episode for like everything to be resolved. So it was still entertaining, yeah. but... Just frustrating. It's interesting because you watched like one and two straight, straight away. away, whether as we were all waiting like a year in between. True, yeah. Yeah, it's funny like how how that all like if it perceives your judgment at all. On, yeah, m- maybe it did. Yeah. So we'll see what we think yeah. when we get into it. <laughs> uh, so let's start with just like overall thoughts on Bridgerton season two. Georgie, what do you think? What's the kind of main thoughts? this season? Um, well, I loved it. I thought it, I thought it was better than season one. Um, okay. controversial. <laughs> I, I think it had more depth to it. And I think season one is more of a person to person conflict mm. when you narrow it, bring it down to that. Yeah. But there's season two, there's a lot more going on and it's, you know, it's almost like family to family. Like there are conflicts in between all the different families yeah um all the like the the stakes are higher as well like mm. in season one it's 
Daphne is just trying to find, just trying to get married sort of thing. Yeah, it's a bit more contained in that Well, there is in this one, like, the Bridgerton family, like, their reputation is going down the drain and mm. the Sharmas have no money. Like, yeah. They need this marriage to survive. Yeah. Um, and their names have already been shamed from what happened with their mum, Mary, um, yeah. which we hear about. Um, Yeah, so there's just a lot more at stake, which I thought was interesting. And I think also in season one, they get married halfway through it. And Mm. then after then, it was sort of like, well, it's going to work out. Like, they're already married. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah, you know that it was kind of going to end happily. Whether it's season two, I was like (laughs) throwing my pillow at the screen. Like, really? And yeah, I I think I took it too far. Yeah. Like there's really one too many times where they came close to kissing and I was like, <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, my yeah. God. But, um, yeah, we'll definitely dive into that yeah. more. Um, but yeah, I, I agree. I think season two had more going on than season one. Um, and was probably better because of it. Like you talked about, you know, the Bridgertons having multiple sort of like plot lines. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was really good. I thought Anthony's backstory was interesting. Yeah. Like season one, especially coming into it fresh. Um, like Juice, Drew Casings in season one was like my favorite character. So it was, sad, it was sad to not have him this season. Like I missed him. But because I liked him so much, I hated Anthony in mm-hmm. season one. Yeah. Um, so season two, I actually started to warm up. I realized like he had to fill his father's shoes, saw him die, mm-hmm. um, which we'll talk about more. But um I thought his backstory was really good. I thought it was also good that he shaved down his oh sideburns. <laughs> like God. as soon as season two started, because oh. I went straight into it. I was like, oh, my God, he looks way better. I'll never forget when that first promo came out. And everyone's like, thank God. <laughs> yeah, oh God. so good. Um, and as well, the sort of like love triangle with Anthony, Kate Sharma and Edwina. I thought that was good. Mm-hmm. They obviously did tease us, which we'll talk about, but... I thought that was interesting. I thought um, as well, Eloise. Yeah. She really started to have a bit more going on this season. Um, also finding a bit of romance herself. So that'll be interesting to see. Um, Did you miss the Duke? Yeah, I missed him. missed him. I missed him a lot. I like because Daphne was still in the season yeah. and she just comes to the Bridgerton house with her child. It's like, where is the Duke? I like, so like it made sense up until right at the end when they were like, oh, she can't come. Augie's got a cold. I'm like, oh, my God, <laughs> how? Like, how? Yeah. Like, so like the eight seasons are coming. Like, you just got to keep making up. Excuses. He's sick, yeah. And the child looks so much like him too. <laughs> exactly. Like, oh Surely they can just get him back <laughs> for, like, a little scene. scene, yeah. So that was a bit annoying. But, um... Another thing that I thought was good about this season was the Featheringtons. Like, mm. I loved that they struggled. I don't yeah. like them. Um, you don't like them? I don't like them, Yeah. Um, which we'll talk about. Uh, Penelope, I thought it was interesting that, you know, she was like nearly getting caught, does get caught mm. by Eloise at the end. And I think her and Colin Bridgerton's, you know, relationship was interesting. And, and another thing on facial hair – Colin's goatee yeah. at the start was just like <laughs> so no, filthy, no. but I think he got rid of it. Yeah, um, you. they're trying to show that he like been like roughing it on his yeah. travels. <laughs> yeah, yeah. like it wasn't enough. Like surely he'd have a full beard after yeah, like, I know. <laughs> months away. <laughs> but he's still young, so he's just got like a few like little hairs. Um, Benedict as well. I like he was like going to art school. Mm. Seems like he's like finding himself as well. I think he got the worst. <laughs> Like side story out of yeah. all of them, I think his was the most. Season one, he like had a bit going on. Yeah, well, I thought they were gonna make him buy or some sort of because everyone yeah. was talking about that was shows, teased a lot. Yeah, well, the show is so progressive and mm. um, especially well in season one, it was considered to be like colorblind casting. Season two, it's deliberate casting, which is great. Oh, but, okay. Um, but yeah, everyone thought that they would bring in some sort of a. Um, queer character, but mm. but then they just completely changed his course and in this one, but they made him really funny, which yeah. I appreciated the team. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that was great. That was good. Um, I think as well, like just coming into it fresh and being a new Bridgerton fan, like the show in general. Firstly, I think I wish I stopped being so like snobby about it because I obviously heard that Bridgerton was like the most watched series. Um, I really enjoyed Squid Game as well, so it was like. Surely Bridgerton had to be good, but I, I just kept on putting it off. 
Would you um, just got overtaken by Stranger Things? Yeah, I know, um, which is interesting. So we'll see kind of how they compete going mm. forward. But I think, yeah, it's a great show, like very interesting take on the sort of Regency era, yeah. more colourful, a lot more scandals, more modern uh, with some music as well. Um, music, which <laughs> uh, I don't know, like we'll, we'll talk about it because sometimes the music I feel is a bit misplaced. Yeah. Um, there was a particular song this season, which I'll talk about, but, um, there are some good ones. Mm. Um, but like the cinematography and the scale of the sets is like so large and bold. Um, and this season was really cool. Like the costuming, new characters. Yeah. It was Mm. great. It's all very deliberate. Yeah. interesting. For sure. Um, now just before we get into our sort of favorite scenes, quotes, and characters for this season two. We'll just take a short ad break and then we'll get into it. All right, Georgie, what were your sort of favorite scenes and other aspects of season two? Um, favorite scenes, we'll start at the beginning. I loved their meet cute um, in the forest. Oh, yeah. The woods. I feel like... When they were hunting type thing? Yeah. Or the croquet in the mud? Oh, no, no, no. Um, you know, when they're, like, on horseback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Randomly. I just, like, it's an important scene and it's one that you've got to do really well. And it sort of shows what's to come. Like, that's sort of before she hates him. Mm. Um, oh, when they first meet, very start. Yeah. Okay, very yeah. Start. But that was a really good one to get the ball rolling. Mm. Um, and then, like, my favourite scene to look at, I think, has to be the wedding. Yeah. Like, that was an amazing... Yeah, just so well done and was so nervous going into that one. <laughs> oh my God. Um, and the way that they did the like panning shots between Kate and Edwina. Yeah. Um, oh, my God. And you, you felt like you were the characters, the way that they did those. Yeah, very um, interesting perspective. Mm, and the then the fantasy sequence came um, when it's just the two of them alone. Um, <laughs> it's just oh, so that's good. So well um, <laughs> yeah. And then the bang, the the bangles falling is like the pivot in the scene, and then it really picks up. And yeah, I had some. I actually had some gripes with that. Oh, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> no, no, no. Like I, I liked it, but I'll talk about kind of just like I don't know. I thought it was a bit weird, but we'll get into that later in the episode. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I really enjoyed how Anthony and Kate met. I think. Yeah. Like you knew that they were kind of way more compatible mm. than with Edwina. Um, and I think she was probably my favourite character this season. Like finally, yeah, yeah, finally we get someone who challenges Anthony because he's got this like ego and season one and two, like he kind of is very much like, okay, I've got to find the most perfect woman there for my wife, like he interviews all these (laughs) girls and stuff. Like it's pretty ridiculous. But um, as well, like she doesn't just, and this was obviously part of them teasing it all out, but she doesn't just like fall for him straight away Mm. and actually hated him for a while. And I kind of liked that. Like she was looking out for a sister and a family over just finding a husband. Mm. Um, So I really liked that. And I thought um, on that, like it was a very satisfying ending. Like they very much like drew it out. But um, one thing I was thinking, like how many episodes did it take for them to first kiss? Because there's like eight episodes in the season, right? Or ten. End of the wedding, so end of episode six. (laughs) Yeah. So it took like six episodes. So yeah. God, it was such a build up. I know. Um, So much tension, which we'll talk about. And they're just like like the razor sharp banter between the two of them. Like yep. as you were saying, like the way that they just challenge each other. It's, and even the when Daphne's she says to him, like, oh, I was I always thought you'd end up with someone more like you. Yeah, like, yeah. All these little hints that come along. Um And it's true, like she is very much like him, like um especially there's like all the kind of like yeah, the horse riding um when they're playing croquet and like uh-huh. Edwin is really bad. Yeah. And like Anthony's really competitive, so is Kate. Um, I really like the scene where they both kind of hit the balls like deep into the woods or whatever, but they're not just like gonna give up the game. Yeah. And then 
And like she still hates him at that point. And then um, they end up like both falling in the mud or whatever. And you knew that they were going to like, you know, know, start getting close and stuff. Yeah. Um, but they sort of like drip feeded those sort of like scenes. Yeah. And I think with how they're so like, like they're both the oldest children. They both lost their fathers. They have such mm. similar. Even I think the deliberate choice of their, even you can see it in the last dance, they're both the exact same height. And I think that was a, like, they could have oh, been really? in platforms. They could have. I didn't you know, pick that up. Yeah. I think it's, it's they're both <coughs> on the same level. Mm. Um, yeah. And, like, I also love the way that she helps him through, like, all the, like, the trauma with his dad and. The beasting and stuff. <laughs> so that scene, oh, God, I was worried about it because I've read the books. And oh, okay. in the books, he, she gets stung and he literally sucks the venom out of Oh, like, my chest. God. And then they get caught and they're forced to marry. That's how it oh, works. Really? The books. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, that's, like, so different. Yeah, but the whole B thing is just a bit ridiculous. <laughs> I know. But he, he's acting in that scene. I was like, I've got to give it to him because that is, like, if you read that script and it's like she got stung by a bee and, and you panic. like Yeah. <laughs> But I believed him. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And like obviously the scene with um the father dying from the beasting in front of him like was hard to watch. Like mm. very, you know, it would obviously impact him so much and he does have all this trauma. Um but yeah, that yeah. That, that scare with Kate was was definitely interesting. Mm. I think all the flashback scenes are a real highlight too and him and um Ruth, I forget the last name, but who plays Violet. Their acting in particular was amazing, I thought. Mm. And and I think it really, Oh yeah. Yeah. It really made like season one when we all hated him, y- you can sort of see why he's like that. Yeah. Um and the fact he's still never really forgiven his mother and had to grow up so quickly from like yeah. when he was like seventeen. Literally. Um, yeah, and it just it all makes sense, I guess. Yeah, definitely developed that character a lot more. Mm. Um, I think as well, we touched on it before, like Eloise had that romance, was it with Theo? Theo. Yeah, I, 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 I really liked it. Like she's usually, you know, she doesn't really care about that sort of thing. She's, mm. um, what do they call it when they're allowed to go out? Um, like promenade, what, what? what do they call it when like... Chaperoned? No, no, no. More so like she's allowed to like you know, go to events and stuff. Oh, they're, like they're out. Isn't yeah, they're out. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, that's what it's called. Um, but yeah, like, because she's out now, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so now she's like maturing a bit. She's um, grown into her bangs too. Yeah, like, absolutely. She's the hair. Um, got a tan too. Yeah, yeah, she did. Um, but yeah, she, uh, I really liked when she confronted Penelope about mm-hmm. being whistled down at the very end. I thought that was like such a great scene because, and I, I think you might disagree with me here, but I don't like Penelope. She sort of annoys me too. I think that's fair. I think, yeah, watching <laughs> I don't know, yeah, watching her this season and her little like she gets really smug about everything yeah, yeah. about whistle down. I know. And I just yeah, like the the big to- the big like question was who's like the vic- like the biggest victim in all of it. Is it mm. Alina or is it Eloise? Like they both sort of yeah. like, betrayed, if you will. By a sister and mm. best friend sort of thing, and with I, like I think it's Eloise and like Penelope was like delu- like completely lying to her face. And, yeah, literally. Yeah, and then like literally writing about her and Theo and all that and like ruining their family. And yeah, I think it's gonna be a really tough one for them to get out of. Oh, hundred percent. I'll be so interested to see what they do. Yeah, I was like when when she does kind of confront Penelope and like you know says how much she's like hurt. The Bridgertons and Eloise herself. I was like, like suck shit, Penelope. Like, mm. and she starts crying and stuff. And it's like, yeah. there's no excuse for gossiping about all these people and like ruining people's reputations. Yeah, I love that line too. And um, when she says the line, like when they're at the ball, and she's like, I hear the blah blah blah. And she's yeah. Like, oh, what a keen observation, Pen. Yeah, and yeah. She's <laughs> got it. Yeah, she's like ruined it. And then um, right after that, she sees Colin. Um, Talking to a bunch of friends about how he'd never date Penelope. I was like, two blows. Yeah. Like, I sort of loved it. <laughs> do you uh, do you want them to like be together, Colin and Penelope? Colin is really annoying me. Annoying you? Never ran. He's just why he doesn't have a personality. I feel like he's really uptight. Like, 
Rowan okay. is a married woman with two children. Why are you going over to her house? And like, yeah, that was weird. And he gave me like just gone on top deck energy where he's just <laughs> rambling about his trips. And yeah, she's yeah. And they're like, I could not care less. Oh, like, yeah, to kids. her like husband. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Going like, on what's about he doing? The places he went. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> like I was rewatching it back this week. I just skipped the scene. I was like, I can't. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, I actually like because, yeah, he doesn't have too much kind of about him yeah. yet, at least. But yeah, that was that was weird. So it'll be interesting to see how they kind of yeah go going forward. Um, what about the Featheringtons? I said before I don't really like them, but the mum like and and in the last season the. Lord Featherington, like, they're just, like, bad people. Yeah. And then we see how she's, like, conning the cousin who becomes Lord Featherington now um, into marrying the daughter. Mm. And then they end up having the, the mum and the new Lord Featherington have this, like, sexual tension oh, later. And, uh, they kiss, don't they? Mm. And then they start running this, like, fake jewellery business. Like, mm. what, what was going on there? I just, I'm very excited for hopefully next season now that we've got. See, the, the thing is, right, like if good old reggae had a stayed, mm. they would have had a storyline and yeah. you know what I mean? So because he left, like they had to give it to someone. And so hopefully oh, next true. season, Kent, oh, like Anthony, Kate and Anthony <laughs> will have like a side job, right? And yeah. we're going to get less and less of the Featheringtons, which... God. Hopefully. I, I hope just, so. Like, in my, yeah, I just, especially the first time I was watching it and I just wanted to watch, like being a book, having read the books, yeah. I just wanted to watch Kate and Anthony. Yeah, the, yeah. I love like the Bridgerton scene mm. and all that. I was just like, get off my screen. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, like, literally. stuff. I was like, oh my God. Uh, yeah, like why was it such a big part? And then when she's like married, she's like, I'm married to Cousin Jack. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so weird. I, I have like no, um, like I don't, I don't like that character, the, the daughter at yeah. all. Like she's not funny. No. It's just, yeah, get off the screen. Yeah, well I said. do like Lady Featherington though on occasion. I'm like, yes. Like yeah. she at the end when he's like we're moving to America, she's like, what about the girls? And he's like, oh, forget them. Yeah. And then she's like, no, nah, I'm staying with them. Yeah, that was actually pretty good. Like, like she like, does have her moments here and there. Yeah. Um, and, and when the queen walks into her ball and she's like, this this ball is my crowning achievement. <laughs> Love that for you. Yeah. Like a couple of little bits. Yeah. And she, um, like, it's entertaining to see how she's so, like, focused on their reputation in society. They've got to have, like, the best dresses and, like, all these things. Um, But, yeah, Featheringtons. It'll be interesting to see where they go in future seasons. Yeah, it's interesting too with them, like, a costume choice is how – Compared to, say, the Bridgertons, who are typically in very simple blue mm. outfits. Yeah. The Featheringtons are in these, like, yellow and green and, like, very decorated outfits. Like, they're yeah. just trying so hard to... To stand out. Yeah, and it shows that, like, they're not from that, <laughs> like, time. Mm. Not, not from that part of society because Portia just has no idea. Yeah. Like, yeah, I think that was an interesting choice as well. Yeah, for sure. I think a good scene as well with the Featheringtons... Colin, which was something good about him, he, like, confronts them, yeah. finds out that the jewellery was fake because he, like, invested in their business mm-hmm. or whatever. Um, and I'm glad that he, like, stood up and, like, you know, outed them because then they obviously then have to, like, sort of flee. But that was a good scene as well. Did you think, like, the, you know, the bar will, like, the, the boxer from season one? Oh, yeah. What did you think about that? Like, what do you about, mean? Like, his whole... Like I was like, this is not. Oh, good. him starting like a like, club or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Well, like, that oh. that didn't really lead to anything. No. I'm what was that even about? Yeah. <laughs> like they just wanted to keep the actor in. They felt sorry for him. They just yeah, gave him a little plot. I know. Because like in the first season, he, um, match fixes the fight to get money for his family. So I was like, oh, okay, like maybe season two, he'll have more of a thing because he was mates with Duke Hastings. But yeah, that did, that just didn't go anywhere. Yeah, that was a weird uh, plot line. Um, another thing as well, Lady Danbury. There was a good scene where, because I don't really like her, um, which I'll talk about. Yeah, we'll we'll talk about later. But um, Lady Danbury, there was a good scene where she's giving this advice to Kate because Kate's very much like, no, I can be independent. Um, 
I can do my own thing, like I'm prioritizing my sister and my family. Um, but Lady Danbury talks about how she is a widow and she's already lived and loved and now she can do what she wants mm-hmm. and say what she wants, which was interesting because season one, I think you just get introduced to this like glamorous, sassy yeah. character. Um, so it was good to like see a bit more going on there. Yeah. I, wait, so why don't you like her? <laughs> okay. Well, let's, let's get into this. Like we'll get into the more bad parts. Okay. I don't know. I just like her voice is really annoying. Like she talks very like, I don't know, snobbly and like her eyebrows are just, <laughs> <I love laughs> eyebrows. That, it's her eyebrows and her voice. Yeah. Like, um, that's really it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know much. That's, that's, that's just, yeah, it sounds pretty bad, but I don't know. I just, she's an OG. that's fair. like she's, she's just like always getting involved in things and like, mm-hmm. obviously that's who she is, but mm-hmm. I don't know. She was just annoying. And, um, like she kind of knew that Kate and Anthony had yeah. feelings for each other and she was being all cryptic, like. Tell them because she gave really good advice to Daphne and Duke Hastings in season one. But then this season she just like was like letting it, you know, fester away. So I don't know. You've got to see it on TikTok. All these people that impersonate her, they're just drawing out of the cane. (laughs) (laughs) That's so. So do you like her? I I think she's needed. Yeah, she she is. She's everything Kate wants to be as well, which I find funny. Mm. But um, I just think she's well done. Like even the um watching an interview and the actress was saying when she got the part, if you watch it back, you'll see that in every scene she has her hair like gelled back pretty much. It's always up. Oh, okay. She's just like always looking like she's just ah, on top of everything. Yeah, she is. And I think she's a character that's neat. Like they <clears throat> sort of needed her as an, Im- for like us to know what's going on and then mm. people are starting to catch on to. So I think she's an essential character. And she also links the two Fam, like she's yeah. a little man. Yeah, in a, absolutely. In a way. But um, I was wondering, like, at the end of season one, how they're gonna incorporate her because she was like the Duke's um, yeah, yeah, mother. Yeah, I was like, how is she gonna be relevant? Mm. So it'll be interesting as they go on how they keep her in the show. Yeah, you know I mean, um, definitely. I think because I also thought that she was whistle down right. in season one. Yeah, but obviously she's not. So yeah, I guess I guess she's the key part. Um. In the Bridgerton story. Mm. Um, While we're talking about that, what did you, uh, season <laughs> one, curious, what did you think about them revealing Whistledown so early on? Yeah, so I, because obviously you mentioned that, because um, I haven't read the books and uh, each season was going to be about a uh, Bridgerton a different uh, yeah, child. And I thought that Whistledown was going to be revealed way later yeah. to keep people in. So now that it was revealed, I was I was very shocked that it was Penelope. Um, but I was like, surely she gets found out in season two, which she has. Mm. And I guess season three, we'll see the kind of result of that with Eloise now knowing. But yeah, yeah I don't know. What, like, what are they going to do for the, the rest of them? I know. And the Queen's very close to, like, she narrowed it down to like five of them. And, El- and yeah. I mean, Eloise is now out. Um, so she's only got, like, she's going to be found out pretty soon. Yeah. You know, what, like, assu- ha- I, I don't know, but say it happens next season, what are they going to do for the rest of it? Because it is yeah. like a big mystery, if you will, and a big storyline that goes throughout the whole thing. Exactly. Um, Unless, like, just thinking about it now, because, like, the Queen loves a bit of drama. Um, I feel like even if she found who it was, she would kind of, use them like I think the queen says that she would like want whistle down as like a partner yeah true to like mm. you know influence a bit of gossip so yeah it will be interesting in that sense mm. um but just in terms of another part that I had gripes with which I talked about um and obviously my one word was frustrating yeah. so Anthony and Kate Sharma's romance was just so frustrating so mm. I think we talked about it before. They're playing croquet. They fall in the mud. They're getting all competitive. And we start to see them getting closer. And I think that was like episode three or f- I think episode three, three or four. Yeah. Um, 
And we start to see her like hate him less and less. Um, then at the dinner scene with the Bridgertons and the Sharmas, you think that Anthony was going to propose to Edwina, but then he doesn't and it's like pretty awkward yeah. and Edwina's all like distraught and cut up about it. I know, I know she gets dragged through it. Um, and then the basting. So there was just like so much sexual tension. Oh, my God. <laughs> and it was like, what is going on? And they were like about to kiss and they don't kiss. And then we go to the hunting scene, which was after that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, again, he's like showing her how to shoot, even though she knows how. Um, and we get this tension again and they get like interrupted. And then and there's like all those like slow-mo scenes every yeah. time. And then I think that night, it's long like, list. yeah, there's library a long list. Next. Next. <laughs> the library, oh. they're in the middle of the night. Like they can't sleep because they're just like thinking about each other. Um, and then I was just like saying to myself, like, oh, my God, this is like the third or fourth oh, time. Just cool. please kiss. Yeah. Like how hard is it? And then um, the next morning, Anthony just proposes to Edwina. No, so that. After the library, we missed an important one. After the library is Dancing on My Own, my favourite song. Oh, um, when he's asking permission. Yeah, that scene. That was a good scene. Amazing. <laughs> I just, and that song choice, I think, yep. was incredible. I think. Great song choice. It's relevant to all three of them, and Edwina included. Yeah. Um, when you think about the lyrics. And then that scene after. Mm. Oh, my God. Such a good scene. And then Daphne walks in. And she sees. Yeah, and that was such an interesting one because oh, it's true. very similar to what happened in season one where Anthony Anthony walked in on, on the dude yeah. and Daphne and she chose not to say anything, which... um. Yeah, I thought that was good. Hmm. I thought because I was like, at the time I was like, fuck, like she's going to like, you know, cause a bit of a ruckus. But then she was just giving advice. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, uh, that I was just getting so... Also like in that dance scene like Edwina was just watching and they're like mm. dancing so intimately and stuff and it was yeah like it was just obvious that they I don't know they weren't right for each other yeah. but then yeah then they get the proposal mm. and you see Kate's face when mm. he proposes to Edwina and she's just like devastated and then I think later they like before the wedding and stuff they nearly kiss again well, then, it's my other favorite part, the magnetic pinky part. What was the magnetic you know, pinky? Like, she's standing there and he walks past and it's just like. Oh, yeah, yeah. What? And they, they don't <laughs> touch. but that? <laughs> magnetic pinky. That's so good. Um, yeah. And then. Oh, my God. That oh God, was so funny. This goes on. This is. Yeah, so much. Out of control. And then um, my other. Wait, I think it's before the wedding, isn't it? The, the One of the best lines in the show, which. Oh, when I, oh, it's when she oh okay dinner party yeah let's go to the dinner party. Um, first off, what did you think about the whole like the money and the oh the yeah 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 yeah, yeah before we go into that other scene yeah good good uh good point I thought that was really good because the the parents are just like shunning Kate like so much and like not even acknowledging her as like their child yeah. or part of the family. Yeah. And I'm glad that Anthony like stood up for them, stood up for her and the Sharmas. And then he was like, no, like I don't want you, like leave the house. Yeah. I thought that was a good scene. I thought that was a big point for Anthony. But then, yeah, it was weird that he then just like kind of, you know, went for Edwina. But what do you think about that scene? Yeah, I think, I don't know. I'd, <coughs> the whole, like, money thing with Kate trying. Cause part of me is like, why can't she just end up, like. <laughs> Does she need the money if she marries, yeah, like, so a, a wealthy husband? What I didn't get was why couldn't she, like, why did it have to, with Edwina. Mm. I think they were trying to get the dowry right, but surely, like, with Especially with the scene after that where he's, like, pretty much confessing mm. that he, I was going to say, lo like, love her, but likes her. Yeah. Like, she could have married him and then they would have married into wealth. Like, it didn't. Yeah. Like, yes, with anyone else, it had to be Edwina for the dowry. Yes. But why couldn't it have been her? 
and she, like she could have married him and then the family would have been fine. I just yeah, yeah. That, right because like, then Edwina could just find yeah. her own husband. That was the only thing where I was like, oh, I don't know, but yeah. So why did she keep it from Edwina? I think so because she didn't want Edwina to then feel the pressure and she oh, wanted okay. to marry the first person. Right. Um, that's and true. She didn't tell Mary either. Yeah. Um, but and I think it's similar to Aunt Anthony in that she just takes on all the like family stress mm. and bottles it up. Yeah. Which is probably why she's so uptight. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was it was a good scene. Yeah. Um, and and it was it's a bit like the wedding in that as a viewer you, you just you know it's gonna come off. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Off this whole thing. I know. To, um, yeah, like. So what was so frustrating was that they then couldn't just like be honest with each other mm-hmm. and say how they really felt and like the you're not sure how Edwina and Anthony are not going to get married. Yeah. And so we get the wedding um and he dream as you said before he dreams of Kate like walking down the aisle mm-hmm. kind of imagines being with her and then in real life with Edwina the bangle scene like she drops the bangle <laughs> right this this is one thing that like i i didn't like because then he picks it he's like oh he like stops goes away from edwina picks up the bangle puts it on kate all like seductively in front of everyone and i was like as if he would do that no. <laughs> like, yeah. like that that's what it like it was obviously kind of to make edwina realize that he wasn't in it and that mm. they weren't but, like, I don't know. Like, yeah. it was weird. It was a weird one. Um, but then later they they kiss at the altar, I think, finally. What annoyed me about the wedding as well was the fact that it would have happened and he, like, like it was Edwina that was the one. Like, it would have been nice if it was one of them who, even afterwards, he's like, I'm still intent on marrying you, like, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I know. Like, oh, my God, like. You've got like an opening here. Why don't you just and what didn't he say that he was gonna tell Edwina that he like wasn't he gonna speak to Edwina that he wasn't like you know in it? Or yeah, something? Well, he he did. Didn't he? he was like she was like because you love me and he was like I we we I understand. God, I know it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I understand you or something like that. Yeah. Um, and it was her in the end who like made the call, which is like oh, I wish one of them had of. Yeah, but out of the two, I think it was and like even jumping back to um, dancing on my own when he was mm. actually, like, do you want to reconsider? Like he was the one who it was just bloody stubborn Kate Sharma. I know, so I stubborn. stubborn. <laughs> and and I, I this is when I was like, it's gonna happen here when she's in the cupboard. In when was that? Wedding. She hides in the cupboard. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. She goes, this is my place of refuge. Or whatever. I was like, here we go. This is it. I was looking around. There were too many like delicate ornaments. I know, but um, yeah, that was by that scene. I was like, this is way too far. Yeah, like, that was out of control. And and don't they like say to each other like go inside or like um or something? They're like both telling each other like go away. That's but they oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, um, yeah. Then they they finally kiss. Mm. And it starts to get a bit heated. And I think the song was like, how deep is your love? <laughs> so and that's, um, is that that scene? So this is the, are you talking about the wedding one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was um, What About Us. Oh, true. But is there's a how deep is your love yeah. later. So that's, a, that's in was the last episode. Um, oh, yeah, so that scene. Um, what happens with that one? Um, I'm, um, okay, so that one is after Penelope writes about um, Eloise in Lady Whistledown. Yeah. Um, also, how wholesome was that family dance? That was good. That was good. Yeah. That was a cute scene, and they're all like, you realize how close they are. That was nice. Yeah. That was very Johnny Bailey. That wasn't <laughs> He's like, hi, Sim, come down. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then they go out. Yeah. And again, it's like, you need to leave or something. Her, her acting in that, I didn't really like. I don't yeah. Know. Her acting occasionally was a bit off, and her accent. She was trying to yeah, do like what a- is her accent? It's like a little bit of Indian, British. Yeah, but it wasn't working for me. I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like the 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 line in that one, like the dialogue, just didn't do it for me. It was mm. 
like it was too cheesy, I think. Yeah, Spitting yeah. My world off his axis or something like that. <laughs> yeah. God. I know. Um, and, yeah. And then much. was it after that that she falls on the rock off her horse? I have a real problem. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. We okay, riding, let's get into this one. And we were writing um, like negative straight yeah. at the top. I was like, bold. <laughs> um, it doesn't make sense. So <laughs> she... She falls off. He grabs her head and there is blood rushing out. Yeah. Like, and then he carries her all the way back, like, on horse, I'm assuming. So it would be a fair distance. Yeah. They get back. It's in <clears throat> 1700s. Like, the doctor would have just, like, done nothing. <laughs> I know. <laughs> she lies in a coma for, like, a week. Or yeah. And then, and, then, and then she's lying there, like, glowing, hair perfect, and just I wakes know. up. And everyone's like, oh, thank God. <laughs> Oh I was like, yeah, I know that it's so ridiculous. Like, oh. like they that sort of injury would have been fatal. Yeah. <laughs> like how was she? How was she survived? And also, on the other side, Anthony's perspective, like he's not getting with not getting married with Edwina anymore. They've talked about their feelings. Finally, mm. why didn't he just visit her while think- she was injured? So I think with that, I think why they did it, which was a good thing, um, was they were trying to sort of recreate what happened with his dad. And his whole thing was he was worried. Like he didn't want to want a love match because he didn't want to like lose oh, his like okay. love or whatever. Yeah. Um, and that was why he was so intent on like his little checklist. Um, so her then falling and nearly dying, he was like, oh, here, here it goes again. Like, mm. I got too close, blah, blah. Right. And that's why it was one of the best acting scenes, I think, of the whole thing when um, Violet tells him that she's awake. Mm. And his, like, if you watch it back, his facial expressions and that, like, the amount of different stuff that he does. Um, yeah, it's just incredible. Yeah. Um, such good acting. So good. But, yeah, I think that was the whole reason behind it. Um, yeah. And then... Yeah, and then when she wakes up, that's a big, like, step forward for him. Like, mm. like not everything will end in tragedy sort of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, but they could have done it some different ways. I know. Oh, come on. <laughs> so have, ridiculous. She could have just fallen and grazed. Yeah. No, not, a bit more dramatic than that. She could have had a way different injury. She could have had the flu or something and been yeah. in bed. Like, it's the 1700s. People die from the flu back then. Yeah. And then she would have recovered. No one would have thought a thing. Yeah. But or it could have been, or um, maybe not another bee sting, but like, yeah, it could have been, it could have been something <laughs> so different. <laughs> Just all these bee stings. All the bees. Um, yeah. But yeah, then, then he wants to like propose to her. Yeah. And she rejects his proposal, right? So she rejects it because yeah. she doesn't think that he loves her. She thinks he's doing it out of obligation. Yeah. Fun little tits. God, I'm lame. <laughs> he Let's hear it. Tulips to her. Yeah. And in season one, Violet says to him, um, you should get some tulips for your future bride. Like they symbolize passion or whatever. And he was ah. like, like said no, whatever. And then he rocks yeah. up with tulips. So he's he's <laughs> you go, welcome. that's a good one. Um, um no, I didn't pick that up. So he yeah, well that shows like he, <laughs> that shows like he's sort of. that shows he's, you know, maturing being a bit more open and, and trusting with his feelings. Yeah. Um, but then they have, is it the like final sort of dance uh, mm. to Wrecking Ball? Was it Wrecking Ball? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that one of your... I don't know. Like it was, actually this was probably a good scene. Like they they finally have like this good dance. But then I think he, does he storm off or something? So he, she's still living. Because she's going to leave. That's Mm. right. Yeah. And then he's like, um, she's like, will you ask me to dance? He says, will you say yes? Um, And then, and it's so funny. This (laughs) ended up all over TikTok because he does, um, he goes like, how many fingers am I holding? For that where he goes like three and then it turns and it's four. And everyone's been like, is that how many kids they're going to have? Is that how many seasons they're going to do? Oh, really? Because they like to put Easter eggs and all. Ah, oh, so I didn't realize ones that from season one that now makes sense. Okay, um, there are all these bees and. Anyway. <laughs> I but, didn't um, know that. But, and then she, yeah. So they dance to Wrecking Ball, and mm. everyone leaves as they're dancing. Yeah. Um, which I think was because everyone was like, 
wondering what's going on. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I think um, because I know later the queen supports or has they have to go to the queen and get the support for them to be together. But mm. I think when they dance and everyone leaves, it was because like Edwina and Anthony had fallen out and everyone was like looking down on them being together maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Um, gossip and then, yeah. Yeah. But then he, at least he finally, I think it's in the last episode, he finally tells Kate that he loves her. Mm. Finally took like fucking whole oh, season. <laughs> um, but it, he, there's a good quote and he says like he can't imagine like a life without her. Mm. But like couldn't he have just said that ages oh ago? God, I know. <laughs> He used her full Indian name. He was like Kathani Sharma, which is a nice oh, touch yeah. with um, jumping back to what we were talking about earlier with the whole race thing. And mm. like last season, I feel like they really tiptoed around the fact that the Duke was black. And yeah, they and, did. Yeah, there just wasn't enough in there. And his backstory just, I don't think it was like good. Yeah. But with this one, all the like, like the, even when before Edwina got married, all the like Indian, um, like that. I don't know the name of it, but yeah. that like ceremony the cer- that they did with the like um, paste or whatever. Yeah, and it, it all just <laughs> made sense a bit more. Um, and then yeah, and then the name at the end I thought was really good too. Mm. Um, because then it yeah they're originally called the she- like in the books they're the chef the Sheffields like that's she's oh Kate okay. And they changed it to Sharma for the TV. Yeah, I thought it was a really good move. Yeah, I think because being new to the show, obviously it's like a different take to normal Regency era stuff, mm-hmm. but would there have been that sort of diversity? No. Yeah. So I, I'm glad that they're like not just putting it in there and pretending it's normal, like they're actually addressing yeah. it. But I did think that they did tiptoe around the Hastings family. It was just like, mm-hmm. oh, there's this family. And like, yeah, that was a bit weird. Um, But in saying how they finally expressed their feelings towards each other um i thought it was very similar to the duke and daphne's story where they just need to sort their shit out for so long but daphne and hastings they had like so much like sexual activity whereas in this season we had like no sexual activity Mm. so it's just like the opposite and i it was just so frustrating yeah. Not that that has to be the whole thing, but like it was just it was just like obviously teasing us the whole time. Mm-hmm. And then one thing I want to talk about especially being fresh with the show and smashing them all together. <laughs> um season 1 there was like a ridiculous scene where um Hastings and Daphne <laughs> Hastings and Daphne are at uh the Hastings like estate. Um and they just start like having sex on the stairs or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> like that you've got maids like who just were walking around and stuff. It's like that is so like just ridiculous. I, I thought that was so <laughs> I thought that oh was hilarious. <laughs> I think they thinking about it now, why they did it was um the whole thing about that, right, was that he didn't want kids, like yeah. purposely. So for they had to show him like really going out of his way to not yeah. have kids. Like they had to keep showing. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, that was sort of why I think they did it a, l- a lot. Mm. But um, the, the – oh, wow, we're talking about season one. The, <laughs> the, 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 if you will, like a rape scene that pretty much happened. Oh, um, yeah. About that, it's like that I, was so controversial. I know. That was really hard to watch. Like mm. it was like – it was obviously, you know, a key part of the story, but I don't know. Like, it was, yeah, it was hard to watch. And then, like, nothing really came of it, like, yeah. in terms of, you know, people getting in trouble or anything. Yeah. Um. What do you think of that? I think if it was the other way around, it would have been this massive yeah, thing. Yeah, exactly. Like, I just think it's double standards. And, Such double standards. And I think Shondaland could have done a better job at like like I think their whole thing is like female stories and all that mm. and, and by doing that they were 
Uh, yeah, I, I just think if it was the other way around, it, they would have changed it. They mm. wouldn't have put it in. So yeah, I just don't know why they put it in, and they could have. Yeah. They could have done a better job. Hundred percent. Um. Yeah. Um. Yeah, for sure. Any other sort of bad parts of for season two? Um. What do you think about like Penelope being caught as Lady Whistledown? Uh, oh, she just <laughs> Penelope just. <laughs> <laughs> No, she was. I was just like, stop whining. And it was also like mixed in with the end of Kate and Anthony's bit. So mm. It was like, get off the screen. Like, I don't really care. Um, I know. But yeah, her and it, it's a, as I said before, I don't know how they'll get out of that one. But yeah, yeah I think, I don't, I don't know. Like, yeah. What do you, what do you think? I don't know. Like, it'll, given that they've revealed it so early, like, It'll be interesting to see where they take it. But, mm. yeah, I just – Penelope, she's always whining, as you said. Yeah. Um, and she's created all this gossip. So, you know, I hope she, like, cops it next season. Yeah, and even we'll there see. was a, um, a scene where, where they're all promenading and, <laughs> and Colin's, like, talking to someone and you look at her and she's got the biggest, like, pout and she's so grumpy. Yeah, like, I know. Stop it. <laughs> like, you're not – Making us like you. I know. Yeah, it's just annoying. Also, like, again, I hope this isn't, like, materialistic and mean, but I don't like her hair. Oh, her I hair, know. it, like, flaps around yeah. and it's so annoying. Well, I don't know if She's, like, it. strutting around <laughs> and her hair is just waving about. I'm like, oh, my God. Just I like strategically are making the side characters, like, you know, the sideburn <laughs> 2.0. Yeah, I know. These wigs and then whenever she, her season is, they're going to, like, make it... Like normal hair. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. they probably will. She'll have this like big glow up or something. <laughs> um, but yeah, that annoyed me as well. Yeah. Um, but nonetheless, despite the sort of like cringe parts and frustrating parts, like it obviously keeps us entertained and it's a great show. So I'm keen for season three. And speaking of, there's a big announcement that next season will be about Colin, right? Yeah, so they've gone against the order, so it's followed it so far. So, the so next, in the books, is it? Yep, so it's Daphne, Anthony, Benedict. Yeah. So they've skipped Benedict, yeah. which I don't know if it's because he's, like, they just don't, they don't seem to be giving him much time. I know. Is he is he younger than Anthony? Yeah, the other thing that He really looks so him, much older. He looks older than the dad. <laughs> yeah. you know, I know. The dad is, like, a young guy. Like, he could have been a yeah. brother. I know. Um, yeah, he, well, he's actually older than Johnny Bailey in real life. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting casting because he, he looks a lot older. Yeah, because um, I thought he was the oldest. And yeah. I was like, why is he not the, you know, head of the family? Yeah. Um, yeah, so they've skipped him. And I, th- I think it's because the way that they've been building up Colin and Penelope, I don't think they can oh, okay. keep that going. Yeah, that true. Much longer. They couldn't drag that out for another season. Yeah, and I think they're going to. My money is after that they're going to do Eloise. I think that they're, they're doing all the yeah. big, big ones. Because Netflix does have like a reputation of cancelling stuff. Oh, okay. There are eight seasons to get through. Yeah, and but they may not. Like they, they cancelled some. Like I feel like they cancelled a lot of stuff, didn't they? Yeah, I know that they um they did a reboot of famous anime show called Cowboy Bebop. I didn't mm-hmm. see it myself, but I've seen the anime. Um, But it was like really poorly received and they were going to do like a few seasons yeah. and they just canned it after one because it was not very good. Yeah. Um, yeah, so maybe they're kind of bringing forward the more what they think will be popular ones. But yeah. I, I still was keen to see where Benedict went. Like season one, as you said, we were kind of um, teased or was like implied that maybe, you know, he's exploring his sexuality um, but then season two, that kind of died down. He went to art school yeah. and he gets in this relationship. Um, so I was keen to see where they went with him. But then as well, like Eloise had like a bigger part in this season. So I was keen. I was probably keen to see either of them two over Colin. Yeah, she's going to be an interesting one. Yeah. Because like, like I think I think she probably will. Like she will, judging by how it's going, if mm. she's going to be a lead, she will get married. Um Penelope. Eloise. Yeah. But the way that they're like selling her character is like so against, I don't know, that'll be a really good one, I think. Yeah. Um, I think as well, like, it'll be interesting to see with Colin because he doesn't know 
that it's Penelope yet. Yeah, that'll be so it'll be interesting to see how Eloise yeah, reveals it, maybe. Knows. So that'll be a that'll be a big one. That'll be good. Yeah, so I'm excited for that. I think I think I was I was really mad at it when I first found out. <laughs> um, but we've moved on. Um, yeah. But when's it coming out as well? Oh, so they're actually filming a spin-off at the moment. Um, <laughs> oh no. Really uh, with it. who? Um, it's with the young queen and young Violet Bridgerton. So it's like oh, cool. okay. Um, and Jeez. Shonda, the Bridgerton universe. <laughs> who they're building the world. Oh out. my god. Um, yeah, Shonda herself is writing it, which is oh, okay, cool. good sign. That's cool. Um, but yes, yeah, so they're doing that one, and then and then they'll do Colin. So I think it'll be. I think we're waiting another year. Oh. Damn it! Um, I'm I'm I've been brought into this waiting game. Yeah, I should wait another year. <laughs> but um, yeah, and then they've also announced that Francesca, the actor, because she was barely in it. Is that the younger sister? The youngest sister? You probably don't even remember her. She. I, I don't know who she is. <laughs> yeah, she was there at the beginning, and then she just left. She oh, was- the one who like lived overseas or something, and she was in yeah. like, was she just in season one? She was in season one. She was in the start of season two. Oh, that's right. Um, she yeah. was a myth. And then, Such a myth. And then they've announced that she's left to go to some like because she got a starring role in like an indie film. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> Is that a Netflix film as well? No, but it's like it's such a good payoff. Like, wait until it's your season and you're like yeah. starring in one of the best series shows. Netflix. Yeah. Like, well, it's like it's made um, reggae and like the other actors like huge, huge, as if you wouldn't just like stay in it for a bit. Yeah, so they've replaced yeah. her with um, Hannah Dodd, who, for anyone who's seen Anatomy of a Scandal, is the, oh. the young version of Sophie, okay. um, who's a great actress. So she'll, because I think the next season she'll get more of a mm. role because hers is coming up. Um, Interesting. But yeah, so a few changes, but yeah, it should be good, but we'll be waiting a while. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, definitely keen for season three yeah. and the rest. But nonetheless, great recommendation. And we'll definitely talk about it in future. Uh, so that is a wrap for Bridgerton Season 2. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Cinemates, a podcast where a bunch of mates chat about cinema over some drinks. Huge thank you to Georgie for coming on the podcast. It was great chatting Please. with you. fun. As always, please let us know what you want to hear about in future episodes. And if you want to send in a mailbag or do an elevator pitch to me, send us a DM on Instagram or TikTok at Cinemates underscore. Otherwise, we'll catch you for the next episode. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Cinemates. Make sure to follow us and leave a review on your chosen streaming platforms. Also check out our Instagram, TikTok and YouTube channel for more Cinemates content. In the spirit of reconciliation, we acknowledge Australia's First Nations people as the traditional owners and custodians of the land and pay respect to the Camaragal people of the Eora Nation upon whose country Cinemates is based. We honour the storytelling and culture of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities across Australia. Also, in the spirit of chatting with mates, remember it's always important to check in with those around you. Whether it's friends, family or colleagues, sometimes they may be going through a hard time and chatting with them may reassure them that they aren't alone. If you or anyone you know is ever struggling, call Lifeline on 13 11 14.